So guess what? Today is a shower day. Just kidding. Every day is a shower day for me anyways. But today is a little bit different in the sense that we're going to talk about how I shower. So the premise of this kind of being like how I shower specifically inside my van. And that's not to say that I only shower inside my van because I don't. Like there are, <laughs> shameless plug real quick, but I swear it's relevant. Um, I did a video that's like top 10 places to shower, I think. And that goes over like 12 volt systems, solar showers, showering outside, baby wipes, all that good stuff. Kind of just gave you half the list but there's more so check it out if you're interested in finding different places to shower probably my favorite place and the one that i use the most would be at the gym and uh on that note i have another video that's like 10 must-have items for public showers so it even has a checklist that you can print and use if that's like your thing the gym usually works really well for me except for the times that I am not in the city and that's kind of the instance where it's like okay if you're not at a campground and you don't have easy access to a gym then you could just shower outside totally I feel that I do that it's great however one of the things that I um, base my travel off of is the weather and not in the sense that like oh okay it's summer so let's go north and it's winter let's go south did i say that right i think so but my traveling in accordance with the weather is more of like where is there a good outdoor climbing spot and when is it gonna be between like 20 degrees to like high 55 degrees fahrenheit like during the day and so naturally if I'm trying, like my goal is to be in a location where the highest temperature of the day is probably like optimal 40, then showering outside just, it's not pleasant. And that was kind of one of the biggest reasons that I even tried to shower inside my van. I mean, that and I've got a big old extended top that if you're like 6'2", you can stand in here. So you know why not but anyways because of the fact that it's just it's really cold outside so like for me particularly showering outside is just not always an option and then when you're far away from the city like you know you become limited and baby wipes they're cool but sometimes they just like don't do you justice especially anyways and then another reason is that you know oftentimes I'm by myself so it's one thing to be like a solo female traveler but it's like another thing to be a solo female traveler who's naked and outside, you know? And I mean, there's some locations or situations where like that, it doesn't really matter. Like there's no one around you and it's totally fine. But for safety reasons, you know, sometimes that's just, it just doesn't feel like the wisest choice in my opinion now if again that's kind of super tentative on the area if there are people around what kind of people if i'm by myself what the weather is like so there's like all kinds of factors that go into that but like just generally you know i feel safer that when i'm by myself i can be in here and shower and no one will be the wiser and so on that note we can move on to the topic of privacy like how will nobody know that I'm showering in here? <laughs> Glad you asked. Um, so I have these window covers, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen. They are reflectix on one side, and then there's just black fabric, black fabric on this side. Um, so obviously you can put whichever side you want out. I've got the window covers. I have them for all of the windows and then i have like the store-bought one for the windshield i also have a shower curtain that i will put up right here on this can you this thing um so then just in case because like sometimes the store-bought words uh you can kind of see the sides it doesn't stretch like the full length of the windshield so i'll put up the shower curtain just in case 
and I also have like another sheet that I could use if I wanted. Oh, and by the way, the window covers, I, I have a tutorial on how I made those as well. It's nothing fancy, like glue, scissors, bam, done. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to shower and I will show you guys uh, how I set everything up and yada, yada, yada. So this lovely container right here is um, basically what I shower in and it lives here. It's kind of a mission to take this stuff off every time that I want to shower, but it's really not that big of a deal. All I have to do is pick it up and this isn't heavy. And in here, there is what I use as like kind of a sink or to wash my hair or my face or like little things. And then my actual shower contraption. Yes. Like literally look at this. Here's my favorite fish right here. Homeboy right there. <laughs> so cute. So I start by just filling my shower with water. I typically use about one gallon. On colder days, I'll boil about one third of the water that I'm gonna use and mix it with room temperature water, and it makes a really nice warm shower. But on hot days, I won't bother with it because one, it's faster, and two, it's super refreshing. And then I just twist on the lid, get the pressure built up, and the shower is ready to go. Before I begin my shower, I usually gather all of the things I'm gonna need so that I can have them close by. So on the days that I wash my hair, because no, I do not wash my hair every day, I'll do it first to get it out of the way. So I put the shower in the bigger black container to prevent water from getting all over the floor because the shower sometimes will leak a little bit. And then I use the smaller red bin as a catch-all for the water. Then I shampoo, rinse, repressurize the shower, condition, rinse again, and then finally tie up my hair so it's out of the way and then I am done with that part. Once my hair is finished, I repressurize the shower real quick and dump the soapy water in the black container to deal with at the end. Then I just move the shower into the now empty red bin. After that, I step inside the black container and finish my shower. Usually the whole shower process, including washing my hair, takes about 10 to 15 minutes. As I said earlier, I use roughly one gallon of water and throughout the whole thing, I only have to mess with getting more pressure like three to four times. So it's really not that much of a hassle. All right, sock of the day. Oh yes, oh yes. A catch astronaut. That's happening. All right, showered, changed. I don't know why I have to feel like a oh. Anyways, now that I'm all fresh and clean, the last step of the shower process is definitely the worst. And that is uh, just the process of deconstructing the whole shower setup and uh, cleaning up after myself. To start the cleanup process, I just dry off the shower and put it to the side. And I'm currently city camping, van dwelling in the city, urban camping, whatever you want to call it. So for dumping the water, if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'll dump it outside so long as there were no super harsh chemicals in it. But when I'm in the city, I'll just put the water back into one of these gallon jugs and then dump it when I have a chance in a more appropriate place. And for cleaning off and drying the containers, again, totally dependent on my location. If it's appropriate for the area, I'll rinse or wash them outside and set them out in the sun to dry, or I'll just clean them off in the van with a towel and some clean water. Then it's just a matter of setting everything back up and putting it in its proper place. For drying towels, it's usually something like this. If I'm in a place where I can't just hang them out, then I'll kind of just throw them up there. Um, I'm not worried about the drawers because they're plastic, and then these, no clips or anything needed. They just kind of do that and hang there, so that's really nice. If there's a good breeze going, or if I'm in a place where it won't matter, then I'll just hang the towels on the door. But again, totally depends where I am because it's not exactly inconspicuous. All right, so that is how I shower inside my van. See you guys next time.